All right. So boom, y'all. Here we are with part two of five songs I loved after the first listen. I always try my best to listen to a lot of music because you never know, you can come across some of the best songs you ever heard in your life. And even if it's not the best, you can come across some songs you seriously enjoy. So just like before, I'm going to be talking about songs that I really enjoyed when I first heard them and I still enjoy them to this day. If you haven't seen part one of this video, it would be cool if you check it out. And also check out the song 100 More by the rapper For Show The One. Follow for show the one on his social media for more of his music. And as always, don't forget to subscribe and hit that notification bell for new videos. Now let's get into it, y'all. What would you do if the show was at home? Crying all alone on the bedroom floor because he's hungry. Now, City High has got to be one of the best forgotten hip hop slash R&B groups ever. Just the amount of soul and smooth sounds they incorporate in their music is so fascinating. But hey, low key, when I first heard this song, I had zero clue what the hell this woman said on the chorus. This junk sounded like one long ass word. But apparently she said, what would you do if your son was at home crying all alone on the bedroom floor because he's hungry? Yeah, I, I didn't hear that at all, but her singing was still great. So the song is a storytelling track with a guy speaking about how a girl he knew from middle school named Lonnie. He recognized Lonnie years later when he saw her stripping at a party he was attending. So he pulled her to the side and asked her like, you know, why are you getting naked for money? Like a lot must have changed since we last saw each other. So the chorus of the song is from Lonnie's point of view with her telling the guy, well, I'm stripping for money because what would you do if you had a son that was always hungry because you didn't have enough money to feed him and the other parent wasn't even in their life. And then Lonnie says, so with that, she's telling him guys love to see strippers for their own like sexual reasons. But for some of the girls that are doing it, their life is really tragic and that's the best way they have to get some money. Now, truthfully, I don't agree with the guy's perspective on this song. In the beginning of the second verse, he was saying like stripping is no excuse. There's other young girls out there with children who desperately need money. And during the bridge, he finally answers all her questions and says, if I was in your shoes, I would get off my feet and start making excuses. My mom was real young with the kid and she made it work without stripping, so you shouldn't be doing it. My issue with this is that since he's not personally in her situation, he just doesn't get how tough it is. When you're in desperate need for money, a regular job isn't going to do it. It's not making excuses. That's what the phrase, I gotta do what I gotta do comes from. It's really not that easy to just dig yourself out of a hole. Just because your mother did it without stripping doesn't mean it's wrong for Lonnie to be doing it. She's doing what she can to survive. But other than that, I think this song is incredible. And it's sad that the City High Trio is so forgotten because they used to make some great music. Let's go get em. Who's that? Now, ever since I included Denzel in my five rappers I refuse to listen to video, I have been getting bombarded with people telling me to listen to Taboo, Imperial, uh, listen to this song, listen to that song. So the thing with that video was that I've listened to a lot of music from some of the rappers on that list. I've listened to every Denzel project, every Big Sean project, and every Logic project. I've even put that in the pinned comment saying that the video is kind of outdated because I've already listened to all of Denzel's Big Shine and Logic music. And literally every day people keep just zooming right past that comment and saying, oh, you ain't listen to Denzel, bro, you tripping. Go listen to the song right now. Like, bro, like Den Denzel is cool. Y'all can get off my ass about him now. But when I was listening to Imperial, I just played the album from beginning to end. And I gotta say, other than Gook, I was in love with every single song on this album. This album is outstanding. But even though there are so many songs to choose from, my personal favorite, I, I gotta go with Sick and Tired. That beat was already hard hitting enough, but the lyrics started to get me too. Like when he said, I ain't going back to jail, nigga, fuck the feds. If I gotta kill a nigga, gotta cut the dreads. But definitely the best part of this song is the hook. I've said this multiple times, even in that same video. I said that I rock with Denzel's music when he's being melodic. So when I heard... I immediately was like, bruh, I have been asleep on this song. Funny enough, I can't like sit still when I'm listening to this track. Every time this hook kicks in, I like, I have to rock back and forth or something. This song just gets me so hyped and it makes me want to just pull up on somebody. But yeah, to all you Denzel Curry fans out there, I'm sorry for sleeping on this song so much and this album in general. Sick and Tired, Zenith, Me Now, UOT. Like damn, every song on this album is great. Oh, hey, DJ play my favorite song. Now, Iceberg is a legendary Miami rapper, so if you're not huge on the Miami music scene, then you might not have heard of him. If you heard Denzel Curry's Zoo album, he was on the song Carol Mart, so you've been exposed to his rapping style. But I heard of Iceberg way back in 2009 from his song, I Get So High. Now for my favorite song, 
I honestly didn't even know about this song until March of this year because of Iceberg's YouTube channel. An unofficial video was uploaded for it, but the song itself is actually a few years old. Like there's another version on YouTube that was uploaded in June 2017, so I don't know why there was randomly a video made, but that's beside the point. Thanks to Twelvelin, this song has such a summertime groovy feel to it. And for that very reason, this was most definitely one of the main songs I listened to in the summer 2019. Iceberg's flow and his voice greatly complements the beat. So like I said earlier, with there being a different version of the song that was uploaded years ago, that version sounds nowhere near as good as the music video version. I don't know what they did to the song, they probably just like mastered it differently for the video, but the video version sounds way better. Plus the original song is like an entire minute longer than it needs to be. For the last 75 seconds of the song, Iceberg doesn't even rap, he just starts rambling some nonsense. This song out here is for the party people, you know what I'm saying? But but what about the people that's working out to this song, you know, pumping that eye in the gym? Especially the sexy ladies who got turned on a new dude at the gym every day. Come on, man, let the lady work, man, let the lady work. <laughs> so as you can probably tell by all my explanations, I only love the music video version of this song, and that's the one I recommend. But Iceberg in general has a great catalog if you want to dive deeper into the Miami hip-hop scene. For those of you that have been following my channel for a long time, you will know this is my favorite instrumental of all time. There's something about the repeated sample of that really makes this addicting to listen to. I literally only know three songs from Freeway, the other two being Flipside. And he was on Nine Brigade song early in the game. But this is easily my favorite out of the three. Benny Siegel and Jay-Z have classic verses as well. The main line from Jay-Z's verse that always stuck out to me was, gotta kill witnesses cause Freeze beer sticking out. That was one of the first rap lyrics that gave me chills as a kid. This song in general just really makes me feel nostalgic because back when I was around seven or eight, this sample stuck with me so much and I always made sure I had this song somewhere on my original Xbox. And then when I started my YouTube channel, when I started the whole trend of ranking the XSL freestyles from worst to best, this is why I chose this beat for the intro. If you watch my 2019 ranking, I talked about how this was a throwback to my OG viewers because back when I used to rank the freestyles from every year, like they, they know that I used to use this beat. So yeah, this song will forever be a banger to me. I'm trying to see what it means to seize the day Figuring out why we live to ease the pain Understand, Understand. If you are a fan of hip hop and you have not played Def Jam Vendetta or Def Jam Fight from New York, if you have even heard of them, I suggest you go look it up this instant. You don't even have to finish this video. Please go check those games out right now. But for people who have played these games, y'all know these games are absolute classics, especially Fight for New York. On these games, you can use some of your favorite rappers to fight each other. They had everybody from DMX, Ludacris, Ice-T, Slick Rick, Method Man, and Red Man. Like, these games were incredible. They also had lesser known rappers such as Bless, who was a cool character to fight as, but I want to talk about one of his songs that was on the game's soundtrack, and that is Seize the Day. Y'all know how in some video games, how you can edit the soundtrack and turn off the songs you don't want to hear? I turned off every single song on this game except for three of them. Seize the Day, Get It Now, and Walk With Me by Joe Budden. I loved all three of these songs. Seize the Day is so soothing, the beat relaxes me, and Bliss has some nice rhymes on the song. Now, quick side note. The reason why I only recommend Vendetta and Fight from New York is because the third game of the series, Def Jam Icon, is horrible. Any Def Jam fan will tell you that we don't even talk about that game, and we actually tried to erase it from existence. It's really bad. I once seen a fan-made cover for Def Jam called Def Jam 3 Street Kings with Kendrick Lamar and Eminem on the cover. If this game ever happened, oh my gosh, I would never leave the house. Imagine being able to kick someone's ass with Kendrick or M. Man, I would play that game all day. And if I had the ability to choose a soundtrack, Seize the Day would definitely be on there. <laughs> 